Welcome to One Symphony, a podcast that explores classical music's relevance in our modern lives. I'm conductor Devin Patrick Hughes, and I'm here to share with you stories and conversations with musicians, composers, and artistic entrepreneurs that aim to unite us into one symphonic world. Robin Fountain is the professor of conducting at Vanderbilt University's Blair School of Music. He's worked with orchestras around the world, including the Singapore Symphony, the Louisiana Philharmonic, l'Orchestre Philharmonique Saint Trinité, the Traverse City Symphony, and the Southwest Michigan Symphony, where he transformed the orchestra's performance level, repertoire, and scope, creating a summer series, a chorus, and Music Makers, a teaching program for underserved students. Robin was educated at Oxford, the Royal College of Music in London, Carnegie Mellon University, was an Aspen Conducting Fellow, and also trained with members of the Berlin Philharmonic at the Conductor's Lab in Aix-en-Provence, where he translated their world-class style of music making to develop his six principles for a more rewarding life in music, in his recent book, The Ensemble Musician, co-written with Thomas Verrier. Robin, I'm very excited to be speaking with you today. I'd like to start by asking about how your upbringing informed being a conductor and inspired you to develop these amazing principles in your book as they relate to playing in an ensemble, but also to life. Well, to be honest, my my background did not really prepare me for this. I I, I was trained in a, in a very traditional kind of way in which the the conductor really was the, the the central focus of all things and also the, the 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 central agent for improvement in the group in when uh, we started myself and and Tom Verrier started um interacting with the the Berlin Philharmonic members which we did not only at an Aix-en-Provence but over a considerable period, um, the, the, we, we would go and, and observe them uh, playing and, and chat to them. And uh, sometimes the, the member, uh, members would come to, to Vanderbilt to coach our students and, and, um, and we would hang out with them then. And, and we, you know, we had a lot of interaction over a, a long period of time. And it really um, transformed the whole way I, I, I thought about ensemble uh, playing and what became obvious to me was that conductors have to be terribly careful not to short circuit the internal m- musical cohesion of the of the of a group and that really your your um your your role is is not to substitute for that but rather to 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 aid and abet it and that sort of turnaround was um was what inspired the book. It, it, it was it was um, a sort of aha moment, and I I just wanted to share it with as many people as I could because I I had admired the way the Berlin Philharmonic played ever since I was a you know a, a kid. Um, I, I mean, you remember probably the the, the time when when von Karajan was sort of musical god, and then the 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 the, the Berlin Philharmonic were were with this you know, um, in, in, impossible um, dream. And I always wondered how it was done, you know, I, I, uh, and uh, it, it was just great to have the, 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 the possibility to, to, to essentially to find out and over a very, very long time to with endless questions and answers and, and wrong turns and, and misunderstandings to gradually uh, assemble something um, that's, that seems that, that, that really are the key things that, that make the difference. So I think this book uh, is really instrumental for conductors, but more importantly, musicians who are playing together in any form, 
classical music or, or, or outside of classical music. And I want to kind of get into some of the principles because I'd really like to highlight, you know, a lot of these specific principles so people can can check out the book and, and get more in depth. Uh, but one of the things that really struck me and I think will strike a lot of people is you always hear about and you hear this from conductors and and when you're learning how to play an instrument and, and, and wanting to play in an ensemble, you know, watch the ictus and that would be the conductor's beat, like watch the conductor, like play <laughs> like and you hear a conductor say, watch, watch my beat. And one of your first reminders is why doesn't playing on a conductor's beat work? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it actually it gave a, a, a very practical example um, of a, a, a person playing Celesta in the four, four last songs of Richard Strauss. And the, the conductor gives the ictus and the, the Celesta plays exactly with, the, with the, 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 the ictus of the beat. But because that, that instrument, it, it, its um, response time is absolutely immediate, it isn't it, it was not on in that that anecdote occasion uh, and cannot be really with the instruments that take just a little bit longer to sound and so the whole ensemble is is um reacting to the to what the conductor is doing but that does not mean necessarily that they play exactly with the ictus they play with each other together reacting to what the what the conductor is 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 giving them our our, our principle is don't always follow conductors but always pay attention to them Meaning that it's the group's ensemble that you're trying to match, you know, that, that you're trying to meet. And, and um, in order for that to occur, there's going to be res different response times of different instruments. There'll be geography. Um, it takes, you know, a great deal of time for, for, for sound to, to go from right from the back of, a, of, of an orchestra to right to the front of the orchestra. And a, a whole variety of different factors can determine when exactly in relation to that beat, you personally should play. But ultimately, your goal is to be with the orchestra. Musicians learn this o o over time, but it, I, I, I tried, we tried to write, to write a book that would help a, a young musician acquire this knowledge quickly and, and be, be, you know, for the first moment they sit down in an ensemble, understand exactly what, what the what the deal is and, and how subtle it is and how fascinating it is and how unmechanical it is. It, it, uh, it's, um, this really, you know, playing in an ensemble really is an art and, and the, the timing of it, of when you play is, is a, is a really important piece of that art. And, um, and it can't be simply, well, I'm going to play with the conductor because if mm. you do, everyone plays, if the whole orchestra played exactly with the conductor's beat, the actual result will be all over the place. Yeah. One of the things I love about how you laid it out is because just, just remembering when I transformed from wanting to be a player in the orchestra, from wanting to lead the orchestra, I was so overwhelmed with everything, you know, like, cause <laughs> initially you have your own part and you get used to playing with your own section if you're lucky and maybe the rest of the orchestra. And then, you know, once you come outside of that, this could be chamber musicians as well. Uh, you're looking at a whole score. You're trying to, you know, kind of break this down. What is the, th there's a magic to it. Like some conducting teachers talk about it in the spiritual realm. Like it's, it's just this yeah. mysterious <laughs> thing, how orchestras come together. And, and, and one of the things I can remember is for intonation, I'm sure you've probably seen or worked with Pierre Boulez, you know, he can hear anything, any little thing that's going wrong in an ensemble. Uh, you know, my wind ensemble director, when I was doing my master's, he would point out every single little intonation thing and talk about the beats and how, you know, how, you know, and, and tell you're out of tune, you're a little high, you're a little low. You kind of talk about intonation in, in a separate way. And, and in my career, I've kind of, I've, I've tried to incorporate some of these principles already before reading the book. Itzhak Perlman said to sound in tune, play out of tune together. Uh, and, and can you talk a little bit about how your principles relate to an orchestra taking their own, you know, leadership, individual members and dealing with the art of intonation? You know, uh, for, first of all, there, you know, there's no such thing as one kind of intonation. You know, if you're playing with a, a, a keyboard instrument, for example, and it can, it can be, you know, tuned percussion or, 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 you know, um, or, or an actual keyboard um, within the ensemble, then it, it, it is absolutely incumbent upon you to play with that intonation. And that's going to be quite different 
from a situation in which there's no tune percussion or, or, or keyboard, nothing in equal temperament. And, and so you can, you can go for, for uh, something closer to natural intonation. And in that, those two situations right there, they require the skill of, of knowing who to listen to at any given moment and knowing what to listen for. And our suggestion uh, in the book is, is to, is to you know, always concentrate, if you're, if, you're, um, if you're not trying to be with a keyboard, always concentrate on listening to the bass have it be be firm and rich and full of full of full of vibrant life, and then consider where where you are in the chord, um, and and constantly adjust to uh, to, to think, thinking uh, laterally th- those around you, to you know who has the same note as me, and uh, constantly trying to, f- to 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 find agreement between those those uh, elements, but all in relation to to a firm bass. Ultimately. Uh, it's going to require you to make a thousand adjustments, um, and and that that constant adjustment, it, it it when when you hear it done, it's 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 glorious. It's just glorious. Um, and and um, I think the thing is that if if one when can, when one can communicate this this principle to a group, then you will tend to get that that kind of intonation going forward. I think. When one, as a conductor, it, it, it tries to tinker with each chord as it comes, um, really your ensemble, you know, you can say, you know, go up and go down and so on. You can be quite right and the chord can come correct, but there'll be another chord. And if, if they're not quite sure what the principles of how to do it are, um, then then really you're going to get another out of tune chord a couple of chords later. So you you if one can um establish what the principles are and and um where where one might put the intonation according to what kind of interval you are in the chord that will really help and then the ensemble will will be able to keep doing that yeah and I, and i like how you kind of give a little bit of a a mathematical uh, just general prescription in that the majors you know the major thirds the major six tend to be large because they're they're major they're bigger the, the minor third six tend to be smaller. The perfect mm-hmm. fifth and uh, fourths tend to be too small. And, and of course the minor seventh need to be lowered because it's generally resolving that way. Right. right. So there are some, there are some, some rules of thumb that are in the book and, and, and they, they're so helpful because they give you a, a, a starting point. And from that starting point, our principle is to play in tune, play out of tune together, meaning mm-hmm. absolutely everything you do it, it, so far as intonation is only it, intonation in relation to what is around you, mm. and that's really the thing. It's this this constant, minute adjustment as mm. as we go is is the key to everything. And what are your thoughts on A being at four forty or above or not? <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's um it's so shocking some, sometimes. Um, to go from recording to recording of the same piece, and you, you know, it can vary such this is really quite considerable degree. You know, personally, I, 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 I do prefer it if we we start at four forty, mm-hmm. and and uh, then just slowly work our way up by the end well, of the symphony. <laughs> the, 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 you know, that that creates its own issues because um, um. Clearly, when the when the when the strings are tuning, right, they're they're, they're tuning in fifths down from uh, an A typically, and by the time you get down to low C on a cello, if you've tuned in in real fifths, you know resonant fifths, your your C is going to be pretty low actually, um, uh, and uh, so the, the the what tends to happen is that the 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 body of the winds and brasses tends to rise and the and the strings tend to remain and so one can one can bifurcate <laughs> if one isn't very careful um, you know there there are, there are some things that are simply practical that you have to you know you have to think about um, and uh, if we we're, we're we're going to play a piece that that has a lot of keyboard for example we 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 would certainly you know I would encourage them to tune the fifths. Uh, 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 in keyboard fifths, not rather than in um, you know in, in wide ones. Thank you. 
one of the things you talk about is is breath, and we we think about this a lot, especially uh, as you bring the wind ensemble with the strings, because obviously the winds are always breathing, and mm-hmm. the strings are kind of taught to breathe in in a similar way. But you talk about it more as a gesture, uh, as as some kind of leadership of movement initiative of the body, the arms, the the. the in in coordination, of course, with the musical intentions. Um, I think anybody who's, who's who's watched the Berlin Philharmonic or any other great orchestras can experience what this is like um, visually and obviously musically. But can you kind of talk about how how you make that transition? How how leaders and orchestras would talk about that for orchestras that that sometimes oh we may be lucky to get the string players to breathe. How do you how do you take it to the next level of of that movement oriented? approach of music making so what you're looking for is is motion that telegraphs to everybody not not only when you're going to play but also how you're going to play so what character what um what kind of attack and you know the 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 tenor of it and that kind of motion what you're trying to get is 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 something very um natural actually and I, i think it's largely a question of encouraging musicians to to, to do actually what would come completely naturally to them, but often has been discouraged or perhaps is discouraged by the very situation because they're, they're with a lot of their peers and they don't, you know, they don't want to stick out or make a, a big show of playing. Um, but, you know, when, when, when you play sort of without motion, it, it's, I think, incredibly unnatural looking and, incred- and, and actually rather unhelpful to those around you because they can't tell what you're about to do. So it's really a question of sort of getting, getting over um, self-consciousness and, and finding your way back into the natural way that, you, that you, you would move. And I think for conductors, you know, very useful is just to think, think about, you know, how, how, would, how would a singer breathe to do this? And um, and that usually will get you, you know, much closer to, to to what you're trying to get. It's essentially, you know, removing the the, the self consciousness um, uh, is really the, the the thing. And also, as that relates to a conductor, because our whole job in in many ways is is movement. I kind of find that the more an orchestra moves, the less a conductor has to do. And then I think this idea of a conductor, you know, sweating and, 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 and participating in some kind of aerobic activity on the podium correlates with an orchestra maybe not moving as much. This gets to the key of what, what, what I was saying right at the beginning. Um, I think conductors, certainly in the way I was, I was sort of brought up as a conductor, you know, from my very, very early years, um, I had wonderful teachers, by the way. Uh, um, uh, Norman Del Mar and Christopher A.D. Were, were wonderful at the Royal College of Music. Um, and but but the whole zeitgeist of, of sort of you know, conducting when I was growing up was was it was a much more authoritarian model. Mm-hmm. And I think they the, the 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 there was a temptation then to 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 substitute for what the musicians actually could, could, could be doing and. The more you substitute for it, the less likely they are to do it. So I think, yeah, I, I, you know, I think one has to one has to enter into it. That's that's a different thing to to substituting for it. And um, and I quite agree. The, you know, the more flailing you do, probably the the less um, the, the the less natural motion you're going to get from your from from your ensemble. And um, I think. The really greatest conductors, um, they don't they don't flail too much. They're very very concentrated. Yeah, yeah. Do Do you have any thoughts about generational maybe divides? I think maybe when younger conductors might be starting with a new orchestra that might be used to that more authoritarian model, might maybe musicians who expect to see, you know, they've they've seen a, a clear ictus their whole life and that's all they want. You know, they're. I mean, do do you have any talk? Ta- uh, uh, maybe suggestions for evolving orchestras in that manner for for somebody who who might be starting with an orchestra in a different style or or maybe the previous conductor was very old school and um, obviously you know we're all trying to encourage this more collaborative approach which you discuss in the book. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great point and um, 
I think what you bring as as the as the conductor will inform how the rehearsal is first first of all, and then I I think one one has to make a conscious decision to hand and and encourage as much as possible the participation of the group, and so the key to that again is not substituting for it. So for example, let's say you have you have a passage where there are various ways in which it could be articulated. I think when I was growing up. I probably would have immediately gone to an instruction about what that articulation could be. And if if I do that, what I've done is is substitute for a very important process, which is that within the ensemble, really, as you would in any chamber group, they can find their own consensus first. Mm -hmm. And if you if you just encourage them to do that, and then when they got consensus, then you can have a discussion about whether or not uh, that consensus fits in with the, the overall interpretation that you're trying to address. And, but that's a whole different conversation then. And the more you encourage that kind of way of thinking and, that, and the moving that will help to get that quicker, the more your orchestra will take ownership. Because what you're trying to do is to have them take ownership of their, their own playing or performing and you're acting as a guide to what that that result is going to be at that moment but it's still their ensemble and i think the worst thing that can happen is passivity like if they just wait for the conductor to say something and otherwise they just do whatever they're doing that's that's what we want to avoid right we want active participation which means and this is really important not you have active participation so that the ensemble members are are themselves fixing things as they go and and coming to consensus as they go without you you saying of course you could encourage them to do it as i just mentioned um and i think that's the way to get it to start to happen but you that's that's what you want to happen and you can you can just encourage it and and it will it will start to take over that zeitgeist. Uh, one ver- more very important thing, I think, the reason why conductors often short circuit the process is is because we're sh- we're short of time <laughs> and we want we want a result now. <laughs> and I, and Lord knows I, I'm as guilty as as anyone. Uh, do, um, do you do you get more patient the older you get? Is that how it works? No, I, I seem to be getting, it seems to be getting worse. <laughs> but but you know we're always under the gun, right? But but I think I think what what is true is that once you've adopted this way of of encouraging people to play, you, there's a certain trust that 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 takes over because it, the thing is it's going to take a little bit longer at the beginning of the process because you're not just saying articulate this way, you're saying find consensus and then we'll make a decision. For example, right? But so maybe it takes a bit longer, but once once they've got the idea that that's what they're supposed to be doing, and and everyone is 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 actively engaged, then the speed of improvement goes you know dramatically up, and the result ultimately will be much more natural and satisfying for everybody. I wonder if you've ever done this, and I've I've heard of the, this philosophy or this idea before. Uh, I've never tried it personally. Instead of having repertoire 
you know, and say you have five rehearsals to put a concert together, instead of just focusing on your concert repertoire, what are your thoughts on choosing a piece that you're not going to be playing in a concert? For This could be for a college orchestra, professional orchestra, youth orchestra, you, you name it. Having a piece that is not, you're not trying to get it to performance level, but you're using it maybe to focus on style, to bring out ideas, you know, from the ensemble without that time crunch of having to put a performance together. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I certainly, I think that's, that would be quite, quite useful probably. I mean, I could see, for example, if, if you, if you had read the book and thought, okay, I'm going, I'm going to try this. And I could see that uh, having a period in which you, you, you basically had a, uh, a retreat kind of atmosphere in which everyone was going to kind of, you know, everyone's going to read the book. Everyone's going to, going to absorb these ideas. And then we're going to spend a couple of weeks just playing with it uh, rather than having a, a, you know, as you say, a, a concert down the street. I, I, yeah, I could imagine that being very helpful. I think what is true is that once this way of, of making music, which essentially, I mean, in, in essence, all it is, is don't check your chamber music chops at the door. That's, that's basically it, right? Come in, treat large ensemble as if you were playing in a quartet in every way. So by all means, communicate with one another. By all means, be, be, be listening out for, for in, uh, intonation for, for one another. It's more important to be together than to be right is one of, one of our things. You know, by all means, whatever you br- brought in the way of your idea of how the piece goes Ultimately, in your quartet, you're going to find one, you're going to find agreement, right? Which may mean you're going to have to leave some of your ideas to one side, almost certainly, and adopt perhaps some other ones that have that are the consensus at that moment. You know, all these things are, are familiar to everybody from chamber music. But what tends to happen if one is not careful is that all that whole panoply of things gets substituted for by the presence of a conductor and thus short-circuited. And what we're trying to do here is turn that around and have that continue and have the conductor have a different role in that. In that. And I could certainly see that a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks spent in a, a, a sort of retreat environment. Yeah, yeah, I could see that being being very cool. One of your, uh, the quotes that you used from Herbert von Karajan was, uh, the art of conducting is knowing when to stop conducting and let the orchestra play. This idea that you mentioned, it's better to be together than to be right. I've always kind of professed that as, as, as why an orchestra is such an amazing model for so many other things. You kind of leave the door open to say, this is applicable in leadership, in business, in government, in nonprofit, uh, you know, off the stage. Can you talk a little bit about that principle uh, and how the musical ensemble can serve as that kind of model? I think the thing about the, the an ensemble is that questions of leadership and you know, group dynamic show up instantaneously in sound. And so it's really the best, it's the best lab ever. So you can hear the results instantly. And by the way, there's, a, I, I don't know if you've ever interviewed, um, if you know anything about the music paradigm, do you know anything about that one? Mm-mm. Um, it, it, I would I would thoroughly recommend checking out their website. And um, what they do is 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 use uh, orchestras as a model for, hmm. um, for 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 large corporations for 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 for, for leadership skills, which is huh. very very interesting. But I think it's very interesting that that conducting and the way ensembles play has evolved over time in sync with the more forward thinking of the way. Um, uh, businesses and other enterprises work. It's become uh, more driven by 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 groups because people found the power of of groups. I, and I think you know, it's certainly been demonstrated uh, amply through through the net what incredible power the hive is. And um, and if you can if you can create a hive mentality within your ensemble, you know you you I, I think you're it, it's obvious um, that that. That that is going to be more more uh, a more successful um, enterprise, and I think the you know there's a lot of in in the whole zeitgeist right now that the the old paradigms are kind of falling, the the more authoritarian ones, and they're being replaced by um, by more um, more more uh, more less top down um, models, and I think that that's a ver- very good thing, and um, uh, I I, th- I think it, it, that 
you know what's happening in in um in in music and and the 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 way maybe uh, ensembles are evolving is is just a part of a, of a much larger zeitgeist mm -hmm. and can certainly serve as a model absolutely can serve as a model because it's very it's very visible you know um the the it just to put it very 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 at its most blunt you know i think the era of the sort of martinet conductor is way over and uh the the era of the of the uh, the the conductor that draws the maximum from through through guidance and and um you know, force of personality to draw the most from their ensemble is 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 uh, is is here, and and this is a, this is a, a great thing. Well, that's incredible, and I uh, I just wanted to say that for anyone who wants to be a better musician, be a better conductor, be a better leader, uh, anyone who kind of wants to know who who's looking at it from the outside, uh, who who sees some kind of air of mystery around orchestras. This is such a cool uh, uh, book and study in how musicians can better interact, how how every musician, you know, you talked about an orchestra being a hive mind. And at the same time, all of those different cells get to express their unique individuality. I think that's the magic of the orchestra. And you've broken it down so beautifully. Uh, I, and I wanted to thank you, Robin, for sharing uh, your book. It is The Ensemble Musician, Six Principles for a More Rewarding Life in Music. And I hope everybody checks it out. Um, and before we go, Robin, I understand you have an upcoming recording session of a symphony by Michael Couric coming up. Yes, uh, Michael Couric um, was, uh, is a recently retired faculty member from um, the Blair School of Music um, at Vanderbilt, where I teach. He's a wonderful composer, and uh, we have the great pleasure of recording a 40-minute symphony. <laughs> I mean, wow. it's not very often one, one gets the opportunity to record a new 40-minute romantic symphony, but that, that's, that's our task in a, in, a, in a few weeks' time. So um, that's what we're currently engaged in. And, um, you know, uh, uh, I think... As long as one has that kind of thing to look forward to, um, life is good. Well, if only a handful of those players in the recording read the book, it's going to be out of this world indeed. And I look forward to listening to it and sharing it. And thank you so much, Robin, for joining me on One Symphony today. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. The book is The Ensemble Musician, Six Principles for a More Rewarding Life in Music by Robin Fountain and Thomas Ferrer. You can find it wherever books are sold. Thank you to Robin Fountain for sharing his insights for a more successful and rewarding ensemble experience, and to Robin and music students of the Vanderbilt University Orchestra for their exciting rendition of Gustav Holst's The Planets. You can find more info about Robin and his book at robinfountain.com or robinfountain.com slash book. You can check out more info about One Symphony or lend your support for the show at onesymphony.org. Thank you to our most recent supporters, Kim, Susan, Christian, Anthony, and Sarah. Please feel free to rate, review, and share the show on all platforms. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the music. Music.